Welcome back to Fascination. This is part six, and the focus of our conversation today is going to be on wood screws. So, how to choose it, how to use it, and what to do to keep you from losing it. <laughs> so, uh, in order to understand how to make appropriate choices, we need to have some idea of what is available out there for our use. So I have a selection of different types of wood screws set out here for different types of applications. I also have a wide range of different types or examples of driving systems that are used for installing those screws and a host of different types of tools or boring systems that allow us to create pilot holes to accommodate the dimensions of those screws. So let's talk a little bit about um, the advantages that screws have over nails. So during module five we talked about the fact that nails have a really good capacity for accommodating what we typically refer to as shear loads. So if a nail is installed, it has a high resistance to forces that are moving perpendicular to its length, but it has less resistance to what we call pullout or withdrawal if a force is moving in parallel or the same direction as the installation of that nail. And that's where screws have a unique advantage. Because they cut threads into our material, they have these hills and valleys that increase the amount of surface area in contact and resist pullout or withdrawal. So there's a tremendous amount of mechanical advantage gained by using wood screws as opposed to using nails. Um, another reason for using wood screws is that they're really easy to remove and you can do that um, with less chance of you marring the surface of your materials. And um, last but not least, there are many more aesthetic options um, in terms of what is going to be left as evidence of that fastener mm -hmm. on the surface of your work like here. So those increased number of aesthetic options um, also give us a great advantage. You'll also find that the variety of materials that, that screws are made out of far exceeds that of nails, and that the different types of finishes that you'll find on screws is also much more extensive than you would find with things like um, nails. We are going to uh, come to understand the different styles of screws, which is going to include um, characteristics like the head style of a screw, the drive style of a screw, and um, we're going to go into detail about why we make the choice of one head style or one drive style over another. Um, in addition to looking at wood screws, we're also going to talk briefly about um, drywall and multi-purpose screws and screws that are designed for very specific applications like um, using in um, engineered wood products like plywood and uh, particle board and in some cases materials like fiberglass sheet. So um, look forward to having this opportunity to um, share a little bit of what I know about this with you all. Let's have a closer look at um, both the anatomy of a screw, the basic function of how it works, and, um, and familiarize ourselves with some of the language that's used to describe these. So um, we also need to ask ourselves whenever we're making choices like this, what do we need this to do? How might we be using it? Because it may be a conventional or unconventional application of that hardware. 
what do we want it to look like when we're done? So the, the aesthetics of that finished object. And much of this is gonna be informed by the material type uh, that we're working with, be that hardwood or softwood or combination of wood products and other materials like uh, metal, leather, fabric, cork, and, and, and also the proportions of that material, be that a thick cross section where we're subjecting it to heavy loads or a thin and delicate uh, connection between small parts and pieces. So let's talk a little bit about how screws are, um, dis uh, how they're described in terms of their sizing. So although screws are available in um, a wide range of different, um, what we call indexing systems, the most common one that we find here in the US is a numerical designation for wood screws, the smallest being a zero, and the largest being a 24. Um, but more commonly, you're going to find things between four and 14 at, um, uh, because those are what are more commonly used. So we use this number size to describe the overall size of that screw. Then we have our length as a description, which is generally defined by fractions. The length has a correspondence to the size of that screw. So you're not going to find a little number four screw three inches long because there's no real practical application of that. So you'll see a range of sizes available for different numbered size, number, numbered screws, but at some point the in the achievable length of a particular screw is going to be proportional to its diameter. So let's look at or point out a couple of the um, screws or, uh, that we have on the table here. So I'd like to start first by um, looking at um, head style. Here we have a series of what are called flat head flathead wood screws that, like most wood screws, the proportional relationship between the shank and the threaded portion of that screw is usually 30-60. So we have a numerical designation of a number 24 wood screw that is 3 inches long. We also will define that by the head style, which is a flat head, and by the drive system, which is called a standard or a slot drive. Here you can see examples of a number 14 flat head, straighter slot drive, a number 10, a number eight, a number six, and a number four. These are all steel, and they're what's called plain steel. They don't have a secondary metal coating them. Here we have examples of some brass round head screws. Again, we have that numerical designation of a number 10, 8, 6, and a 4. These are also slot drive. Here we have a head style that is a combination of a flat head and a round head. It's called an oval head. So it has the classic countersunk component that allows for flush mounting to a surface with a slight radius on the top surface of it. And these are usually used as decorative screws um, on things like surface mounted hinges. This wood screw has an oversized roundish head that's called a truss head. 
And in this case, the head is enlarged to distribute load over more surface area. You also find that screws come in a, wood screws come in a wide range of um, materials. And here's a good example of an aluminum screw, a stainless steel screw, a brass screw, and this is a steel screw that has been heat treated for hardness. And that finish is called bluing. Here we have a hexagonal head for driving the screw, a slot, square drive, and Phillips drive, Phillips drive, and Phillips drive. Whether it be slot or Phillips or square, there are numerical designations for different drive sizes that correspond to a particular screw because it's very important that the driver have a precise correspondence to the screw, otherwise you end up stripping out the head of the screw. So. When we move up into these hex-headed screws, they're most commonly referred to as lag screws or lag bolts. Here we have some specialty screws that include something called a dowel screw, which is headless and has threads on both sides, which allows us to attach two pieces of wood together. This is called a hanger bolt, which has wood screws on one side and machine screws on the other side that allow us to use mechanical fasteners in combination with that wood screw that are things like this T-nut. We'll talk a little bit more about these types of transitional hardwares that allow us to go from one standard like wood screw thread to another standard like machine th screw threads when we do the um, machine screw nut and bolt module. Here we have a screw with an open hook, screw with a closed eye, and we're also going to talk a little bit about finish washers today. Among the accessories that we are going to use to be able to pilot or create a opening or a space to accommodate the volume of that screw includes twist bits, countersinks, combination countersinks for flush mounting, combination countersinks for flush mounting in fixed sizes of screws, combination drill bit countersinks that can be adjusted in terms of their length for specific size screws, hinge bits, Forstner bits, paddle bits, and we're also going to look a little bit about, uh, a little at some of the hardware that's typically used in association with um, these wood screws. We'll go into some detail about the different drive types that are for hand driving, like these slotted screwdrivers, this Phillips screwdriver, this nut driver, this Torx driver, this multi-tool screwdriver, we're going to briefly touch on general purpose or multi-purpose screws that are engineered for driving, that are used for things like decking and mounting sheetrock. So we'll talk a little bit about these black phosphate screws, stainless steel screws, and screws that have secondary metals put on the surface of them like zinc or cadmium or chrome plating that give them a resistance to oxidation.